Hello there, one and all, and welcome to episode 403 of Love at First Scent with me, Percy Lays, live on YouTube. As always, thank you very much for tuning in, whether you're watching live or you are watching the recording. And we have a comment already. The first comment today goes to Musk in Heaven, who says, Hello all. Hello all indeed. Hope, hope you're all well. Hope you're all... Um, if, if you're in my part of the world, hope you're all managing to stay dry. It has been an extremely wet few days here. So if anybody has got any dryness that they can send our way, please feel free to do so. Rachel is here as well saying hello. Um, please do consider subscribing to this channel if you haven't already done so. And if you do subscribe, please click on the little bell so that you get notifications of new videos. And <coughs> the main thing I need to sort of say to you is that the plan for today, for those of you watching live, is that we're going to do a single perfume episode, a review of this one that I've been wanting to tell you about for a little while, and then we will take a two-minute break, and we will come back with a top 10, but one of our sort of fun top 10s. Um, the, the time of year may give you some kind of indication as to what the subject for the top 10 might be. Um, Mirel is here saying, evening all. Yo, yo, Joanna, or oh, yo, Joanna. It says hello from Bucharest in Romania. Eric is here as well. So is Sharon. You're all very, very welcome. So what is the subject of this review? It is a flanker. I hinted about the, the existence of this flanker a little while ago in a, in a fairly recent video. It's a flanker to one of the, the, the most successful and most highly regarded, most loved scents from... Lalique. Uh, a lot of you will know that in 2006 they released Encre Noir, Black Ink, composed by Nathalie Lorson, uh, a, a, a seemingly a kind of deceptively simple vetiver on top of musks, but it, it, it just did that vetiver on top of musks thing very well, which is why I think uh, it, it, it became as successful as it did. Um, not a huge number of flankers, which is which is I think always a good thing. I think I think there was there, there, there was a vetiver, there was an encre noir for women. Uh, I think there was a, an encre noir sport. There was an extreme one. Anyway, now we get uh, encre indigo. Now I don't know if it, does does the word indigo mean the same thing in French as it does in English. So is it is it indigo? I don't know. Somebody's going to tell me. And um, this one is composed by none other than Anique Minardo. Uh, Eric says, I worry about a blue bottle these days. Yes, I know what you mean. And of course, this is this is a kind of indigo bottle. But I I I like this one. Maybe with a few with a few reservations, with a few qualifications. Um but I, I'm taken with this. So let's have a spray. Uh, fear not, I have a very, very brief press release. So it won't take up too much of your time. Um, this was, I think, officially released uh, a matter of days ago, maybe 10 days ago, something like that. Um, here we go. There's the bottle. And there's the initial sniff coming up. Mm. And, and it is the initial sniff um, that I really like, that I especially like. Um, because it, it feels like a proper flanker. So you know that it is, you, you can tell straight away that it's going to be respectful to that basic vetiver structure of the original Encre Noir. You feel the vetiver note coming through straight away. Um, and, it, and, it, and it's a very sort of swarthy vetiver. It's, it's, it's quite deep, it's quite rich, it's quite earthy, but it's not overly swampy. Um, but what you... What you get at the top is something that is, I don't want to say lighter, because that would kind of make you think that this is a, that this is a light scent. It's not. You get, you get something that is perhaps more fizzing, more sparkling, maybe um, a little bit more peppery um, than the original. And I guess it it gives it it gives us a sense it gives it a sense of vibrancy it gives it a sense of movement. The original Encre Noir is it very much feels like a kind of heavy inkwell. It's it's a great scent, but it also feels like quite a static scent. You know, it, it's sort of quite deep and weighty and authoritative, um, quite sonorous. Um, this one. Is is trying to is, is sort of trying to lighten proceedings and 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 it it succeeds. 
Um, there's a really, really likable saffron note, which is, I guess, the main twist, um, the, the main sort of point of departure from the original. Um, and it 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 feels it feels like it feels like um, the original has kind of decided to go on a on an on an adventure holiday somewhere and deciding to be a, a more dynamic and more vibrant and more energetic. Um, I'm, I'm going to talk about the qualifications and the reservations in a moment, um, but let us see what I can tell you from the actual um, press release, which, as I say, is very, very brief. It says, we're delighted to share with your latest men's fragrance, Encre Indigo, an artfully unconventional scent for a new generation of free spirits and a thrilling sequel to Lalique's iconic bestseller, Encre Noir. Um, artfully unconventional. I mean, I would go with this idea of free spirits and maybe something that is thrilling. It says it's a spirited symphony of soaring citrus and pecan berries. Okay, maybe not so much on the citrus, but berries, sharp peppery berries. It says Calabrian bergamot, juniper berry oil, and pink peppercorn. Definitely, definitely quite a lot of uh, pink pepper. And um, you can get the juniper as well. Then it says we've got the silky smooth flow of undulating spices with bay oil from Madagascar, black tea from Korea, and saffron. Now, I'm not getting a huge amount of black tea, but but it, it's that saffron, and maybe actually the bay is what is giving it that aromatic feel um, that is very, very attractive. And then finally, a deep inky signature of earth and smoke, vetiver oil from Madagascar, patchouli oil, uh, ambergris, and mossy earth. Um, and as per usual on Love at First Scent, I have got a blotter that I sprayed, what time is it now, that I sprayed just under two hours ago. Um, and this leads me to my qualification stroke reservation. It's, um, it probably doesn't stick around as much as you would like it to. And a lot of people, I think, reaching for a frank, flanker of Encre Noir are going to want something that has got the tremendous sillage and the longevity of the original. This is definitely quieter on the sillage. Again, yet another example of a newish scent that is turning down the volume controls. That, that There seems to be a lot of that happening at the moment. Um, and... And it does kind of go into its musky base fairly quickly. But, but on the other hand, and this ties in with something else we've been talking about lately, you can pick up 100 mils of this for under 100 pounds, which nowadays actually feels like something of a minor miracle. Because according to the, 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 the official information I've got, 100 mils of this is 89 pounds. So not even 90 pounds, people. And 50 mils is 75 pounds. And I think this is so much better and so much more attractive and so much more convincing and so much more uh, balanced and more interestingly made than so many of the things out there that um, we're being charged, you know, 350 and 400 pounds for. So, 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 so much better. Um, and I think, I think it would also make a very, very, very interesting feminine scent. So thumbs up for me from this one for sure. What are what are what are you all saying? Um oh okay, a lot of you seem to be saying that your the, the, the video is not running for you. Um although some of you are saying that the video is running for you. Okay, well that is a little bit bizarre. Some of you have got the whirling ring of death. Um some of you are saying that the video is just loading for you, but for a lot of you it's working fine. Okay, well. I'm not sure what I can do about that if it's working for some of you and if it's working for isn't. Everything here on my screen says that the live is going ahead. So maybe once it's uploaded, you can you can go back and watch the recording. Um, so sorry about that, folks, for those of you uh, watching live. Some M says that was happening happening on another live stream that I was just on. Must be YouTube. Um, OK, well, really, really sorry about that. But if you're watching the recording, please uh, let me know what you think of the scent if you've tried it. Um, I'm going to have one final sniff. It's it for me, for me. It's that combination of the saffron and the patchouli and the vetiver that that really really sells this. Um, the vetiver, 
does not go down the swampy route, which is also a big selling point for me. Um, and and you can you can you can see Anik Manado's love of of darkness and blackness um, here. I I, th I, th I think I think it's pretty good. I think it's pretty good, and it's one of the best things that um, Lalik have given us for a little while. So apologies to those of you who've been experiencing technical difficulties, but as I say, perhaps um, the the recording will be available for you to watch. Um, that's all I've got to say about this one. We will give YouTube a few minutes to sort itself out, hopefully, and then we will come back with our um, spooky top 10 for 2023. Okay, thanks very much for watching. See you soon. Bye now.